Hey there! Today we're going to talk about a pen by a brand which I have not yet sampled, and that brand is Rosetta. Uh, I'd heard of Rosetta, some people I know got uh, pen pouches by this brand, and I thought I should try it out. And I found a pen by them that I really liked, and it's called the Napoleon. Uh, Napoleon, I am not wearing a shirt that I can just stick my hand into, but I suppose I should have done that. Napoleon, uh, Napoleon was a, a pretty small guy, and the reason I tell you that is that this is a pretty small pen. I'm not sure whether that was a reason to name it Napoleon, but that was the association I had. This is a small pen. It came with a little Ziploc bag with a private reserve cartridge and a small note that tells you that uh, Rosetta recommends private reserve inks. Uh, so, um, you get one of those cartridges, which is cool. The pen also comes with a converter, which looks a lot like a Monteverde mini converter. Mon uh, uh, Rosetta also sells those separately. So, I'm not sure whether they're from the same company or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, what matters is you get, you get a, a uh, cartridge and a converter with the pen, which in itself was less than $30. So, I don't think that's a bad deal for a pen in that, that price range. All right, I'm, cover the part, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I'll do a writing sample. But before that, I'll do something else, but we'll come to that when we come to that. Um, so, first of all, we got italic acrylic resin. That's how it was described. I, I'm assuming that's a type of precious resin. Um, I think it looks cool. Uh, it's not the best lighting out here right now, but it's a nice, uh, relatively deeply marbled resin. Uh, and again, for a pen in this price range, I think it's it's pretty spectacular. As I said, it's a fairly small pen. I think it's just a little bit bigger than a Twisby Mini, which unfortunately I don't have lying around right now, but it's just a little bit bigger. Maybe I should do a shootout between the two in the, in the future. All right, pass the pen. On top of the pen, there's nothing, just the, the, the same material as the uh, the rest of the pen. Now you get a little clip, look at a cute little clip, it's very cute, it's very small, um, it's very springy, springy enough to be used comfortably, I like that, I like, I hate clips that are really excessively tight. And you get the center band, on the center band it says Rosetta, zoom in. Rosetta, which I like, nice and shiny. Uh, there seems to be fairly good lighting for the uh, acrylic finish, too. I like that. All right, then at the end, we've got a little sort of chrome-colored uh, end cap thing, which is very reflective, as you can see. Those two blue things are from my webcam. And you can also see that the end is threaded. And the beauty of that is that you can open up the pen, and you can post it very securely, uh, because it, the, the, the cap screws in place. It's a very odd inner cap uh, because it doesn't seem to extend all the way to the top and it doesn't really matter. It, it serves its purpose very well. And no matter how you put it on, it always screws in the same way. Uh, and uh, one of the issues with that is uh, that the, 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 the clip and the nib did not align uh, when I got it. So I, I moved the, the nib is in a, a nib color and I just moved, I, I got it out and I twisted it a bit to try to fit it in and then at some point I, I found a good configuration so now the uh, clip and the cap do align. Uh, when I got it, it was at about a 90 degree angle so something like this so you have the nib and then you have the, the clip uh, and it's uh, it's kind of offset which could be a little unpleasant when you're writing I suppose especially when you're left handed for me, it's not an issue. As I said, I've, I've solved that issue. All right. Uh, then we have the section, which I think is nicely shaped. It's comfortable to hold. You see a relatively sizable step down from the barrel. Um, personally, for me, it's not a big issue because the, the section is shaped in such a way that it's really comfortable to hold. I don't find a reason to hold it higher, which I often do with pens because this section is, is quite comfortable. It's also quite thin, so for people with really thick or, or you know long fingers, that, that might be a bit of an issue. All right, um, the edge, the barrel, is a little sharp, 
but not so sharp that it would cut into your skin or anything. I wouldn't find that I don't I don't find that unpleasant to use. Um, and as I said, because of the nice shape of the section, my middle finger sort of curls up underneath there. It's not touching that step down, so that's good. Threads are fairly large, not sharp. Feels good. All right, the nib. Well, the nib is nothing too spectacular. It's Iridium Point Germany. You've probably seen this a couple of times with the scroll work, etc. I'm going to come back to the nib in a second. First of all, just unscrew the barrel. Here you have that converter. As I said, reminds me a lot of the Monteverde Mini Converter. Uh, I, I haven't put them side by side, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they are pretty much the same converter. Alright, so what about that nib? Well, oops, it's uh, the, the, the problem was I inked it up with Pipe Reserve Tanzanite. Uh, which is known as a laxative of inks because it's a it's a very um, a fairly wet ink that tends to make pens that are dry write well. Uh, that's that's so a lot of people use it for that purpose. I put that in because it's a five preserve ink and, and Monteverde. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, Rosetta wants you to use um, five preserve inks apparently. So I thought let's just throw that in, and then I found out that the nib was excessively dry it was so dry that it hardly wrote. Now, I don't know whether that's characteristic of Rosetta pens because I only have one. Um, it could be just my nib that, that maybe not, not have been perfect or whatever. Um, but uh, that was a bit of an issue. So I thought that it might be interesting to, before I actually do the writing sample, to show you what I do to tune up a nib like that and make it write well. It's something that takes a couple of minutes not more than that, then you have a pen that actually writes well. And the difference, as, as you'll see, is, is quite significant. All right. Having said that, what do I like, what do I not like about the pen? Well, I really like the looks. I really think this acrylic stuff looks very nice and very, very classy. I love the deep purple. I think you can also get these in different colors. Um, but I, I, the, the purple called out to me. I think this is a very nice. It's, it's nice. It's somewhat restrained, it's not too flashy, and yet it looks really nice. Um, I like the overall shape, I like the overall size. As I said, not a big pen, um, but you have that, that nice uh, threaded posting ability, which, which looks quite cool and which is very practical. Um, I like the section, I like the fact that you get both a cartridge and a converter, so in all, I think it's a pretty good package. What I don't like is that my nib didn't write. I mean, it was so dry that it hardly did anything. Um, and that's something that can be solved. So it's not a huge issue. In fact, I think part, part of the fun of using a fountain pen is the ability that you can work with your pens a bit, tune them up a bit. And that is not for everyone. But I think if you spend a little bit of time learning how to do it, you can really have more fun with your pens, making them a bit drier, making them a bit wetter, etc. So. What I'm going to do next is show you what I did to this pen before and after, so you'll see what the effect is, and I'll do the familiar writing sample. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye bye. All right, so Rosetta Napoleon, beautiful pen. I love, I love the finish. And then I, I post it and I start to write with this, with it, and and this happens. And I'm applying some pressure here. It's not that I'm not using any pressure. When I use some real pressure, you see that the pen has got it in itself to actually write well and give a nice line. But right now, it is excessively dry. So what, what do I do with this? First of all, you don't panic. You can solve this. Uh, maybe you want to try another ink, but this is Private Reserve Tanzanite. And if there's one thing I know, it is that this ink uh, is uh, it's sort of known as a laxative. It will make dry pens write well. So I know that it's, it's not the ink here. So I'm going, I've collected a couple of tools with the trade. I've, I've got my, my trusty loop here. And I have some brass shims, 0.001 and 0.002 inch. I got uh, some, some buff sticks. You, you, you can get them. Uh, I got some, some rubber gripping material. And I got a bit of water. Alright, now what I'm going to do is first, here we go with some cloth, see if I can disassemble this pen. Well, the first part should be easy. I can get the barrel off and I can 
get the converter out. Um, and now I probably want to remove the nib. Ideally I'd, I'd like to do that. And now fortunately with this pen it's fairly easy. You can use this rubber to get a good grip. You can just unscrew the nib and feed. Notice how I was holding the nib and was unscrewing the section. That way you don't dislodge anything. Um, you can, yeah, you can probably get that out. You see that? And then you've got this bit which has the, the nib and feed in there. It's a nib collar. Um, so what I do is again I, I grab the nib and feed. I move that nib collar a bit. And there we go. Nib and feed are out. Uh, that is not always easy. Sometimes it's very, very hard but in this pen it was doable. Okay, so what I do next is I grab some glass container which I've got right here. I'm going to give the feed a bit of a flush. There we go. Do the same with the nib. There we go. And what I'm doing now, and I'm doing that off camera is hold the nib up to the light and what I see is not a whole lot because it's not dry and to make sure it's dry when I do that yeah so what I see is what I expected the nib slit is extremely tight I'm not sure how well you can see that um, but the, the, the slit I would, what I would ideally like to see is that it's the widest near the breather hole and then gets narrower towards the tip but I don't want the two tips to touch and right now it's something like this so there is no space between the tines there and it's it's not like that so what I'm going to do is first grab a 0.002 inch brass shim I'm going to put that in the I always put it through the breather hole like this I just slide it in there now it is extremely tight it's very hard to get in there so I just run that through a couple of times and it's getting increasingly more easy to do so I always like to go back and forth a bit like this while I'm doing that Right now I'm gently pushing upwards a little bit with my two fingers. Now don't overdo it. This is really just a little bit of pressure that can sort of open up that tine a bit, you see, because you're sort of pushing up like that. And I'm turning it around, I'm doing the same thing. Gently pushing it up a bit. Alright. I just get out some of the gunk. I hold this up to the light again. I'm sorry I can't show you situation has improved a bit but it's still not the way I would like it to be so I just continue with this shim push down a bit more pull it up to the light again situation has improved even further but it's still not where I want would like it to be so I just slam that shim in there this is colloquially colloquially known as shim slamming alright hold that up to the light again yes well we're getting somewhere this is not going particularly far sometimes this is all it takes this nib has a particularly tight slit and although particularly tight slits can be fun in specific contexts I don't really enjoy it in a fountain pen nib so I'm going to take my loop here I really want to check this out maybe I can show you a bit of the issue there's no light coming from below the nib but you can see that there is a slit just doesn't extend all the way to the tip of the nib. So what I'm going to do next is a somewhat more dangerous technique. I have a video on this. What am I using here? I'm going to use the section that should be robust. Now what I do is I take the nib, <clears throat> I put the very tip on there so I'm really... can you, can you see that? I'm sort of resting the, the uh, end of the nib on there. 
I hold it like this and I'm going to push up gently like that so I'm sort of lifting up this bit of the nib the, the end of the nib you see I'm lifting that up and that will force the tines to open up a bit that's what I'm going to do next you don't apply a lot of force and you most definitely go slow you can always do this a bit more and a bit longer and a bit harder but it is more difficult to undo any damage you have done so go slow and be careful this should be good okay I hold the nib up to the light again yes it's it's better but I'm still not really satisfied for five I always like to do that for about five seconds there we go okay the nib as you may see under a loop is now turned upwards ever so slightly it's not extremely pronounced but it's there and also the nib slit now this is going to be very difficult to see you can switch on the light there, it's probably just going to overexpose uh, Yeah, it's, it's really difficult to show you that. Um, but what, what, let me see, this is probably not going to work either. Well, maybe just a little bit. It's hard to see, but what, what has happened is that the nib slit is now opened up completely, all the way to the end of the nib, to the, the tines. And now, when I put this shim in, I can feel that it's it's easy to slide that through to do some more um, uh, shim jamming um, it's easy there and near the end it gets a bit more secure and what I like is the nib to just hold a 0.002 inch shim like this it doesn't fall out that may have then this the, the slit might be a bit too broad this was just you know now it fell out of course but the nib can hold that shim as you can see alright now what I'm going to do next <coughs> is take a 0.001 inch <coughs> sorry, shim just to get out some gunk from the nib because I've been jamming that, that brass shim through there this is just some, let's call it flossing just getting out some gunk there we go and there we go now this bit the shim probably yeah that falls out all right sounds good to me I put some water on just to get the final bits of gunk out I always like to rub it with my fingers I get the finger that, that pulls out some stuff now I dry this nib gently and let's, let's just recap what we've done I tried I started with a 0.002 inch shim um, that didn't really seem to work, so I've bent the nib upwards a bit, opening up the tines. It's a fairly minor effect, and if I hold this under a loop, I can still see a taper, so it's the, the gap is widest near the breather hole and closest towards the nib. Alright, I'm going to assemble this again. Something like this seems to make sense. I put that in the nib collar, slides in, um, all right, let's get some ink in there, all right, that should be primed. And now I will grab my paper again. Alright, so let's see what this has done. I am right now applying no pressure. This is absolutely no pressure. I'm, I'm letting the pen do the work. If I do apply some pressure, I get this. And under no pressure, I get that, which if you compare it to this, which is what the pen started out with, 
uh, and this under pressure, then you will see that right now the pen does under no pressure what it used to do only with pressure. And having said that, and having shown you, guided you through this tune-up, um, which wasn't even that long, I think we can now safely do a writing sample. So what we have is here is the Rosetta Napoleon with a, I think it was a medium nib, it is now. The ink is Private Reserve Tanzanite. And the paper is Rudia. Uh, strictly speaking, I should say the nib is Steve Meistered. Boom! There we go. Writing. Writing is smooth. I had some of those buff sticks available, but there's no need to, to smooth out the nib right now. We can do a bit of fast writing. As you can see, the feed keeps up well with the um, nib. The writing speed, no skipping or skidding or any other odd things. And what about wetness? Well, I've seriously increased the wetness, so... It's a fairly wet nib now. Um, what about line variation? There we go. Looks good to me. And um, you know what? That's all there's to it. So here we have it. The Rosetta Napoleon. Very nice pen. I love the way this looks. If you purchase one, I hope your nib is fantastic out of the box. Mine required a bit of work, but I hope that was educational anyway. And um, that's it. I hope this was useful. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.